The Gophers have a new running back who jumps out and puts himself in the mix for the top of the depth chart versus Eastern Michigan. We're recapping the Gophers week two win, and we need to talk about what has to improve for week three versus North Carolina. You are locked on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Uh, Golden Gophers. Whatever it turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And we're diving into it today. The Gophers absolutely run over Eastern Michigan. We're going to recap the game along with talk about what needs to improve for this upcoming big matchup against our first ranked opponent in the North Carolina Tar Heels. And then we're going to talk about what, how this week three game is big time for the Gophers on their season. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Lockdown. Make every moment more with FanDuel. And right now, new customers get a $5. When you bet $5, you get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed over at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Now, Gophers fans. It's a huge one. We're 2-0. and We're heading into week three versus North Carolina. And to get all of your daily Gophers goodness and get all of your everyday updates, be sure to follow over on Locked On Golden Gophers wherever you get audio podcasts and subscribe on YouTube. Now let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. There was a lot of good in this game, but there is still need for improvement. Now when we recap the game, The first thing I want to talk about when it comes to the good is we talked about preparation the entire week on how Eastern Michigan uses special teams to flip the field, put themselves in advantageous opportunities and get themselves into the game, allow themselves shorter scoring fields. Well, the Gophers absolutely took Eastern Michigan out of the special teams game 100% completely. And that is extremely impressive. In my opinion, you didn't give them the opportunity to do what they wanted to do. This is one of the best special teams units, probably in the country, the best special teams unit in the Mac. And you didn't allow them to get anything generated there. Every single kick was kicked out of the back of the end zone. Every single, you didn't allow their kick returners to get going. Now, last week, they had a kick return touchdown of 96 yards. They had a punt return touchdown of 80-some yards. They had a big punt return of like 30-plus yards, and they had a punt block for a safety. Now, the Gophers didn't punt at all in this game, so there was no allow for punt returns on their punt return touchdown that we saw or the two big punt returns. There was no allowing for a punt block opportunity because the Gophers never punted. The Gophers were super efficient. Now, they did have some issues punching the ball in four scores, but they were putting up points on almost every given occasion. And then on top of that, like I said, no kickoff return opportunities because Dragon Kesich's leg was booting that bad boy out of the back of the end zone for a touchback every single time that the Gophers got a score. So taking them out of the special teams game was massive. We talked about we just needed to have some consistency and play fundamentally as one of our keys for this Eastern Michigan week. And they absolutely did. And not only that, but they created some special teams, special moments of their own with a blocked punt for a safety, nearly a touchdown, great team effort, beautiful moment. So beautiful that Kyler boss jaw was hanging on the televised big 10 network game. When he saw that happen, we asked the different players, Ethan Kelly, McManus, Darius Taylor, Kyler Ba about that punt block. And they all were like, I don't know if I've ever actually seen that live before. So they were all impressed with that special teams unit, proud of those guys. And I was proud of the special teams in this past week. So that is definitely part of the good. Another thing in the good is that this defense continues to show it is absolutely the real deal. It is nutty and we're going to need it big time again in week three. But the defense was you know, had some moments in that first half where they gave up 148 yards and it was like, oh, it seems like we can't really slow down Samson Evans. It seems like they're getting some movement, even though they can't necessarily turn it into points. They had, I believe, one field goal in the first half, one field goal in the second half, or it might have been both field goals in the first half. 
quick recall, I think it was both field goals in the first half. One of them was later. But regardless, the defense had four sacks in this game, three pass breakups, one turnover, and allowed their quarterback to only pass for 42% completion rate. But what was the most impressive, the most great thing to see from this defense was the second half and the adjustments that this team made. Like I said, they give up 148 yards in that first half. They gave up four total yards, four. I can count on one hand, one, two, three, four total yards to the Eastern Michigan team in the second half. They had two sacks in the second half. They had their interception in the second half and they gave up not one single first down. In the second half. Now that is impressive. G play Joe Rossi style defense was a key of the week, and they did that and more. So you're talking about they were check checking off the keys to victory that we were talking about. It was great. The only one they didn't check off was turnovers, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But I want to talk about two more things that were good. The pass rush, it's still clicking. The tandem of Devin Eastern and Kyler Baugh on the interior are starting to mesh together. They're starting to work in sync really nicely, and they're creating some di disruption in there, and they're helping this D-line get home. Kyler Baugh was a man on a mission in this game. It was absolutely great to see him fired up, to see him generating some game-changing plays, and to be able to get home to the quarterback with only four rushers is huge for the Gophers because then it allows the different blitz packages that they do throw out with a cat corner blitz or with the Devin Williams blitzing off the edge or Jack Nicholson coming in from the Nick or Jack Nicholson, Jack Henderson coming in from the nickel position. There's just so many different packages with the blitz to create different pressures that can be more effective when you're getting there regularly with four as well. And we saw that in this game. We saw Trayvon Jones get a huge sack in the second half that really got the Gophers back and kept momentum in their favor. So overall, it was great to see the pass rush clicking. And then the final good, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about Darius Taylor, the running back who absolutely popped off, the true freshman. And if you were listening to the show all week, you probably were anticipating this opportunity could be big. Now, maybe we didn't expect 200 all-purpose yards big, but the boy balled out. The boy did great, and I am excited for the future with Darius Taylor. You know, the opportunity was great, and we knew it was going to be there because Eastern Michigan struggled to stop the north-south runners, especially once they wore down in the second half versus Howard, and we saw that again in full force this week. 206 all-purpose yards, a touchdown, and he is now second all-time in single-game true freshman rush yards with 193 only second to another DT in Daryl Thompson, the Gophers legend, with 205 rushing yards in a single game. But he'll have more opportunities to get after that one. Even Coach Fleck in the presser said there might be some games where we need Darius Taylor to take more carries than he did in this game. And some less, but more is more than the 33 he saw in this game. So you can see him be a workhorse in some different game opportunities. Now let's move to the bad. No touches for Zach Evans. I thought it was interesting. Coach Fleck did say in the presser after the game that we have to get more reps to guys like Zach Evans and Jordan Newbin. Now I think that they we will see more opportunities for them, especially in maybe not North Carolina. We'll see what happens there. I feel like you need your, your trusted, tested backs on that game now. But when you move into the Northwestern, you move into the Louisiana, you got to get reps for those guys so you can give some of your other ball carriers uh, a breather. And so that's definitely going to be something hopefully they work in as we continue to go. But we need to talk about another bad, and that was the early mishaps and tackling. Now, it was cleaned up later, but especially in that linebacker position, we saw a lot of missed tackles in the early game. Broken tackles by Samson Evans, broken tackles by the quarterback. And so it was just like, we got to clean that up because we're not going to be able to always redeem ourselves from that and, and stop it to a field goal or no points on future games like North Carolina, like Michigan, like Iowa. You're going to have to get those cleaned up ASAP. So got to clean that up. Now, I think there's a lot missing still with Cody Lindenberg not on the field. Now, Maverick Baranowski has been really impressive to me with how he has stepped in, especially because that Cody Lindenberg early came along very late in fall camp. He's been a very nice young player, but I don't know if he's necessarily completely up to speed when it comes to complete 
communicating with the whole defense at that middle linebacker position while also playing fast and with instinct. I think he's still thinking a little bit too much on the, on the field, which you would think because he's a redshirt freshman who is getting his first true playing time, big time playing time, lots of snaps. And it wasn't expected from the jump. It was expected he'd be more of a rotational guy, a guy who could step in and help and make plays and whatnot. But he is being at the help, at the forefront of this defense. So I think he's still thinking a little bit. And sometimes it's a touch too fast, but there's so much promise from him. The final thing for the bad is the interception. Now that's not really on Ethan. It was tipped and then it was uh, batted up into the air and turned into an interception. But again, turnovers. That was one of our checks for the week is you got to keep the game clean, no turnovers. And we had two in this game and there were opportunity for four. So you got to get that cleaned up, especially as you head into tougher matchups. Now the ugly, the ugly was the amount of opportunities we had in the red zone that we couldn't turn into touchdowns. And we're going to dive into that big time in just a moment in our next, what we need to improve. But it was an ugly point of this game. Predictability in the play calling, especially in the red zone. Again, something we're going to dive into deeper. But finally, injuries. Injuries were big in this one. We had Brevin Span Ford, who went down with the injury. It sounds like he'll be okay, but that is a big time loss if the Gophers have to miss any time from him. Maverick Bernowski, who's already stepping in for a Cody Lindenberg. If neither one of them can play, this Gophers defense could be in some trouble at the middle linebacker position, and this is the worst week for that to happen. And then finally, Quentin Redding, our special teams uh, returner player. He was a a returner, all honor, honorable mention in the All Big Ten last year, and he came down with the injury. He wasn't able to finish the game. Corey Kroom stepped in. I wonder if the Gophers will let Christian Hoskins get some opportunity. It looked like he was about to take one of them, and then a penalty happened, and then they subbed him in for or subbed Corey Crooms in for him. So we'll see if he gets some more practice reps and gets the trust in the return game in this upcoming game. But that was a lot of the ugly. The final one is Sean Tyler losing the ball three times. Now, the ball is the program. You hear that with Coach Fleck all the time. He was not happy about that. And once that third one happened, that actually turned into a turnover. The first two went out of bounds. But that third one that turned into a turnover, I don't believe we saw very much of Sean Tyler after that one. You have to take care of the ball. So that was the ugly. But let's jump in deeper on what the Gophers need to improve for this big time week three game heading out of this game. That is what is coming up next. First, I definitely want to talk to you about our friend over at Athletic. Now is the time for your game changer of the week and they are brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company and much like Darius Taylor, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Now Darius Taylor was this week's game changer of the week with 35 touches and 206 all-purpose yards and a touchdown and athletic brews is the real deal just like Darius Taylor showed to be in week two their brews are great tasting and award-winning and they beat out full strength beers in global competition they brew over 50 styles of craft non-alcoholic beers including IPAs golden sours you name it and more and best of all no hangovers you can find athletic brewing co's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com first time customers can use promo code locked on to get 15 percent off your first order online that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n at checkout for 15 percent off at athleticbrewing.com athletic brewing company fit for all times now, Athletic Brewing Company and athleticbrewing.com in near beer exclusions and conditions apply. All right, Gophers fans, let's talk about this. What needs to improve for week number three, what we have to clean up from week number two. That is what we're about to dive into. But thank you for making Lockdown Golden Gophers your first listen when it comes to Gophers Daily Sports. And if you can't get enough college football, you can check out the live college football kickoff that is broadcast across all college football channels on Fridays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time. Now let's talk about the things that have to be cleaned up before next week. And that was the things from our ugly section. Now the first one is that red zone offense. The Gophers had eight total drives in this one on offense. They made it to the red zone, even within the 10 yard line 
actually all of the or six of their drives went within the six yard line or closer on the Eastern Michigan side of the field, six of your eight drives. And yet we only walked away with two touchdowns that can't happen in the big games. You have to turn those field goals into touchdowns. Now you're talking about the first drive of the game. We got down to the two yard line and we had a turnover on downs. Then you go to the next drive of the game that the Gophers have. They get down to the six yard line and they have to settle for a field goal. Then you get a touchdown on the third one. Things are starting to cook up a little bit. You're getting excited. You're like, okay, here we go. It's starting to click. Then you get to your next drive and you get down to the one yard line and you have to settle for a field goal. Then you get back on the board again with your next offensive drive, a touchdown. So you're cleaning it up a little bit. The one yard line thing, maybe a fluke. You could have had three touchdowns in a row. That would have been big time. The next two drives, we have turnovers. You have the Sean Tyler fumble and then you have the tipped interception by Ethan Kelly McManus. And then finally, the final drive of the game, the Gophers drive all the way down to the field. They look like they're going to break the Vegas line. They look like they're going to take over plus 20, or they're, they're going to beat that plus 20 line mark. And all of a sudden you settle for a field goal finish at a 19 point victory. And you know what? We have to get more than two touchdowns if you're within the six yard line, six different occasions. If the Gophers want to have a shot against your North Carolinas, your Ohio States, your Iowas, your Wisconsins, maybe even your Michigans, they have to go and make sure they turn those into full blown, fully fledged touchdowns and points. You cannot settle for field goals like we did against Eastern Michigan. Now, Eastern Michigan is going to be a good team in the MAC. They're probably going to be a 8, 9, 10 win team in the MAC. So it's still a really good victory. It was still an exhausting victory for the Gophers, but we have to clean it up. We have to turn those into touchdowns because settling for less is going to take the game out of the Gophers' hands in future opportunities. Now, it was apparent that the Gophers were on a mission to run the ball in this game. And they saw that we saw that right away. They saw that as an opening in this game, but more creativity in that red zone to punch it in and actually get the score would be nice. And it's going to be necessary moving forward. Now, number two of what needs to improve heading into future weeks is scheming for our playmakers. When the offense runs, it has to, it has to have some moments of, okay, we got to get Brevin Span for the ball. Okay, we got to get Daniel Jackson the ball to create it or to create in space. You have to get the ball in their hands on some easy ones and some open field spaces when the offense is running dry, when it feels like things are kind of stalling out. We got to find ways to get the balls to our playmaker. Now, I was fully expecting the game plan to be running in this one. We talked about it all last week. But as the game went on, so did Eastern Michigan. We have to have some creativity. We have to have some usage for some of our guys. Now, when we are in that goal line and we're within the five yard line, within the six yard line, and we're running our five foot eight, 180 pound running back and Sean Tyler on third and short in the red zone, rather than scheming or mismatching with our tight end, who's six foot seven, 270 pounds, or our running back who is now 218 pounds and showing he can carve it up. That's not a chance of punching that ball in. It isn't a chance of. It isn't our best chance, I should say. It's not a chance that there's not 0% chance that we score, but it isn't our best chance of turning those into touchdowns. We have to scheme up better opportunities for our players. Now, we talked about it on the postcast with Ron Johnson and Sam Eckert. If you didn't catch that, we're going to be doing them every weekend. So definitely, when you're done with the Gophers game, hop on. We're talking about the game immediately. But we talked about Coach Fleck probably is trying to keep some of that film lower keep some of the things the opportunities for the opponents to not see some special looks some certain looks down especially in these early games especially against an eastern michigan because you got north carolina coming up next but still we got to have some sort of creativity to get the ball into our playmakers hands now hopefully we will see that in this upcoming matchup that will be part of the litmus test will we find the way to have more creativity in the scoring was that the case? Were we just trying to make sure that we weren't showing too much on the field? So that's something. But like I said, getting it into our playmaker's hands, Brevin Span Ford has to have more advantageous routes. We have to be better at recognizing the mismatches. Now, we were better from week one to week two on catching some of those mismatches because there were some bright spots. When you saw him lined up with the corner one-on-one, -on -one, like we had talked about after our week one game, 
we did throw it up to him, I believe, three times. And in those three times, he had a catch and he had two defensive pass interferences drawn when he matched up one-on-one versus a short corner or versus a linebacker that couldn't keep up with him. So scheming him two to three looks every game could be super nice for the Gophers moving forward. And then finally, when Crab comes back, and we don't fully know when that is, I have hope that it might happen this week, but we will see. But once he is back, it should open up the offense a bit more because he is great in the intermediate part of the field of coming on crossers and winning the 50-50 balls, having advantages in that front. So that way, when he's drawing more attention in that middle part of the game across the middle of the field, then you're opening up more of those deeper shots for a Daniel Jackson, for a Lamecki Brockington to take the top off. So once he comes back, that should be really good. And then in the scramble drill, which we saw needed improvement in week one, we didn't see it much in week two because we ran the ball a lot. But in that scramble drill, he has more of that mind meld with quarterbacks and understanding where to be as that quarterback is moving. So that will help this offense so much. Then the final thing that has to be cleaned up, we talked about it once, we got to talk about it again, is missed tackles. Now cleaned up throughout the proximity of this entire game, but we have to clean it up from the jump because Drake May is not going to be forgiving if we don't get him tackled. Omarion Hampton, who just balled out for North Carolina this last week, is not going to be forgiving if we don't bring him down on the first tackle. So we got to clean up the tackles from the jump, so that we're not we're, we're that way we are not allowing score uh, scoring opportunities down the line. Now, the final thing we are going to talk about on today's show is what week three is versus North Carolina, what it can be for the Gophers. That is what we are going to talk about coming up next. But first, I got to talk to you about our friends friends over at FanDuel. Now, get ready for the NFL season with an incredible offer from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. On top of that, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now's the best time to join FanDuel. It's a super easy app to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. And the Gophers right now are not favored in this next game. They are down by a touchdown. It's a seven-point difference right now. So if you believe in the momentum this Gophers team is doing, you can get advantage of that one. Put your $5 bet down, get your $100 off of NFL Sunday ticket, and get $200 back in bonus bets at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL and locked on. All right, Gophers fans, the final thing I want to talk about, we're going to fly through it, is what this week three matchup can mean for the Gophers. Now, week one, we saw the quick passing game. Week two, we saw the running game of the Gophers. Week three, we are going to need to see a complete game from the offense in order to pull off the upset. Now, North Carolina is a good squad, and we will be diving into the matchup all week. So be sure to hit subscribe over on YouTube so you don't miss what you need to know about North Carolina, which we'll cover tomorrow. Or the three keys to victory, which we'll cover on Wednesday. But for sure, this is going to be a big matchup for the Gophers to potentially get their resume building even better and put their names in the conversation for a ranking in the country. Now, that said, this game isn't a game that the Gophers should fear or be afraid of. It should be a gritty game. It should be a dogfight, but it is still a winnable matchup for the Gophers if they played their best football. Now, App State showed some chips in the armor of the North Carolina Tar Heels, and we'll talk about that throughout the week. But I had Tar Heels... Tar Heels fans chirping in the comments of our shows for the past weeks or so now, plus when we did our opponent breakdowns in the summer, and they were talking about how this defense is fixed and how they had nine sacks versus South Carolina. They're the real deal. But just like I said for Minnesota, we got to temper the expectations. It was week one, and it is tough to make conclusive statements off of one week. Now, they came back out. They played App State. They had zero sacks. Four tackles for loss, gave up 527 yards of offense. Now, the truth is likely somewhere in the middle there, but the defense still has some openings. On top of that, if the Gophers offense can clean up the red zone struggles like we've talked about and buy the defense time for adjustments, that could be huge for this game because Joe Rossi and time for adjustments is huge for the defense. Then finally, we got to set up. The setup is right there for Minnesota. The opportunity to get in the rankings is right there because this would be a huge resume building win if the Gophers can pull it off. And if you play your best clean football, I think they can do it. Now, Colorado goes out there. They beat TCU in week one. They get ranked. 
Duke takes down Clemson. They get ranked. Washington State takes down Wisconsin. They get ranked. Miami takes down Texas A&M. They get ranked. All those teams took down were non-ranked teams, took down a fairly decent ranked team, found themselves in the rankings. The Gophers can do that with this one if they can pull off a victory. Now, as we said on the live post-game show, this game is a measuring stick for the Gophers and Gopher football team on how serious it can be in this 2023 season and how high the potential or the ceiling could be for this year. It will be a tough game. It will be a tough schedule, but this one, will help us see where we stand with the Iowas, with the Wisconsins, maybe even with Ohio State's if they can't clean it up fully. Now they looked a little bit better this week, but you get what I'm saying. The opportunity is there. If the Gophers can go out there and show they can be real against the big dogs, this will be a big week for them. Now the trenches are going to be huge in this game. We're going to talk about insights on North Carolina tomorrow, including the new need-to-know info and players we need to step up. And also, could it be a launching pad for Ethan Kelly McManus? Wednesday, we're going to talk about the keys to victory. And then, of course, we're going to do a prediction show with Tristan Spanford. Hopefully, we'll do a crossover show with the Locked On Tar Heels host as well. Be sure to subscribe because we are going to be very on top of this. We have been on top of the keys to victory for the past two weeks, and they've been very spot on. On top of calling our shots and the predictions, that has been fun. And also, we look to keep it rolling because we've been doing pretty good on that one. So hit subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow. That's going to do it for us. Row the boat, Sky Umago Gophers. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.